I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. And this is a review of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Once again, thanks to Great B, who sent in a generous donation through PayPal for these reviews. If anyone ever wants to request pretty much any type of video, review, or movie topic, whatever, you can either request it directly, send it to my PayPal, or you can join my Patreon. Both links are down in the info box. If not, no worries, but if so, Thank you so much. And this one I liked a lot more than Chamber of Secrets. I'll say that. I thought this one was one of the better directed movies. And it made sense to this from the director who did Gravity. Which is a film I love. I love Gravity. I know a lot of people don't, but I do. One of my favorite Sandra Bullock films. Saw Gravity twice in the theater. But just really enjoyed it. But... Uh, this one just seemed like it had a bit more with the camera work and a bit more stylish in its visuals and also the plot was a bit more interesting and I thought the pacing was a bit better compared to Chamber Secrets. I like that the beginning of the film Harry Potter after his par his adopted family and now his aunt is talking shit about his parents. He fucking turns her into a big balloon and f floats away and then he finally leaves the shithole that he was at. I'm like, fucking finally? He's in this crazy bus ride, which I thought was much more interesting than the fucking car thing at the beginning of the second one. Uh, I like the introduction of these creatures called Dementors. Which are like this black. In another film, they'd be like death or something. Like they got shrouds, they're all in black, and they float like a ghost. Uh, I didn't mind the, the look of the Dementors. And this one just seemed like it had more going for it. Uh, the ground, you know, they get back to school again. You have some more interesting creatures, like this half eagle, half horse creature, which I thought looked really interesting. More fun in the class. Like, hey, take something you fear and then make it silly. So there's a big spider. Boom. Now it's got roller skates on. It's flipping all around. A big snake tsh, becomes a jack in the box. So this one. I felt a bit more of the, the fun imagination compared to the second one and a bit more dealing with the classes, which is, I think, one of the better parts of the first movie. And I didn't feel as much of that in the second film. You have the Quidditch in the rain, thankfully it doesn't go too long. 
Uh, also, like Kenneth Brana and Dobby the Elf, I didn't give a shit in the second one. Here, David Thewlis, who plays his teacher, he's the guy who teaches them take something you're afraid of, make it silly. Uh, I thought the actor did a good job. And I bought his bonding with Harry. The whole plot of the film is Gary Oldman plays the prisoner of Azkaban. And Harry finds out that this guy is actually his godfather. And he thinks the guy killed his parents, but you find out, no, he didn't do it. He's innocent. And actually, this actual villain is actually Ron Weasley's rat. It can form into different shapes. Some of the CGI does not hold up. Like David Thewlis, his character turns to a werewolf, and then Gary Oldman, he can change shape, so he turns to like a wolf. It just, it's a really bad CGI. I mean, granted, it's 2004, so it just doesn't hold up well to CG. It introduces something that, again, this thing where they introduce this stuff and they don't really bring it back. Like, they don't bring back the phoenix birds that was in the second film chamber of secrets and this one they bring up the whole idea of time travel this thing you could time travel back now granted they do say well awful things happen to wizards when they meddle with time but they meddle with time because the the half eagle half horse this dipshit bully Malfoy from the previous films he oh I'm so hurt when he really wasn't and gets this bird killed executed so while going back through time they able to save it but then this other stuff happens and Harry goes oh I had already done it so it has to work this way what you've already done it but you didn't save so when you had already done it that time you didn't save the bird but now you say this bird horse I mean I know that's confusing whenever we talk about time travel it could be confusing because what happened was Harry was with Gary Oldman and then there's these Dementors and if you say a certain thing or shoot this blinding white light and he sees someone across the way do it and then when he goes back in time he realizes that's him was across the way that did it and saved Harry and Gary Oldman's characters is that I've already done it so if this is the part of the time warp you tell me that time you still saw the bird get killed but the bird got killed but you're over there doing the thing but now this time now all of a sudden you save the bird but then still do the same saving you from the pond. It's, I know I'm confusing people, but. Also, when you get to the fucking final battle, don't you think a thing with time travel would be fucking helpful? Awful things happen when wizards meddle with time. But you saved the bird. It didn't end anything. Nothing got bad or wrong. By the way, I don't think we ever see that eagle creature again. Just like we never saw the spiders and the phoenix birds in the second one again. What's all this shit like? You, you bring it up, then you... Do they ever bring up the time travel thing again? I don't remember them ever bringing that up. If it did, I'm sorry, I missed it. So, part of me... I, I do think this is better than the second film. Because it just went at a better pace. I thought it had much more creative juices with the camera work and other aspects I was a bit more interested in the story I like Gary Oldman and David Thewlis the ending pretty much the ending is they're able to let Gary Oldman get away Because he is innocent. I know this sounds stupid, but it doesn't feel like a big sense of accomplishment by the end of the movie.
there's not really any big battles or fights. I guess other than the other Harry Potter from the future doing the whatever the hell spell for the Dementors to leave, at least for now. I guess for me, I was always expecting like this big battle at the end of each one. That's not always the case. Sometimes it's the case, but it wasn't for this. So I don't know, that brought like a little bit, eh, to the sales I was on while watching the film. But uh, find out more about Harry's past, a bit more about his parents. You know, he did little bits and pieces here throughout these films, whether his dealings with Alan Rickman's character, Professor Snape, or him dealing with Dumbledore and their bond growing between Harry and the lead wizard. You know, those are, I'm sure, the moments that people who love these films appreciate. And I can understand that. Like, I don't mind those moments either. You know, the actors do their jobs well once again. Emma Watson, uh, Daniel Radcliffe, and so forth. You know, other than not really getting a, to me, a satisfying battle. I mean, it's just sort of the guy really did it. He gets away for another day. The villain that was pretending to be Ron Weasley's rat, he gets away. I guess it's, it's not a whole satisfying ending because these are characters that have to be in the later movies. So it's kind of like a big build up and then it's like, hmm, eh, whimper of a finale, at least to me. The one guy turns to a bad looking werewolf and he runs off and then he's like, hey, I'm too dangerous once he's back human. So David Thule is like, I'm too dangerous here. I'm going to leave. We'll see him later in another movie. I sort of was like, again, it wasn't that great of a satisfied finale, but for the most part, I was liked in the film. And I do overall not mind the film. It's just... I don't think these Harry Potter films are going to be films I would rewatch much. Not really. But I do think the actors and the characters, they do work well. Like I said, the, the direction I thought was a bit more energetic compared to some of the others. And again, good cast. Nice introduction of people like David Thewlis and Gary Oldman. The story for the most part was fairly interesting. I, mean, I do think this is a better paced film compared to Chamber of Secrets. It wasn't two hours and 40 minutes again, thankfully. And yeah, overall, definitely an improvement over the second movie. And I would say one of the better Harry Potter films. I would say that. So thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.